subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Save your phone's battery. So in this video, I'm not going to be talking about, you know, software tips. I'm talking about the physical hardware itself, the lithium ion technology that is sealed into the back of your modern day smartphone. Now, first thing you should know is that lithium ion technology loses capacity over time when you charge cycle these phones. So what that means is that you charge your phone up to 100, you charge, you let it drain all the way down to 0%, and then you charge it back to 100. That's a full charge cycle right there. Um, you also will decrease the battery life of your device if you do have these phones in elevated temperatures are really too cold of a temperature. So typically when you're over like 95 degrees, over 100 degrees, you know, if it's just beating in the sun, this can hurt the battery life of your device and also the coldest temperature. So, you know, if you're in sub-zero temperatures and you leave your phone outdoors, this can really eat away at the lithium ion technology that's sealed into the battery. Luckily, most of us are not in these extreme of conditions. And if we are, we quickly get back to room temperature. So most smartphones are going to offer up about 300 to 500 charge cycles. So what that means is the charge cycle I just explained to you how you can drop it from 100 to zero and then charge it all the way back. You can do that about 500 times before your battery will drop down to about 80 or so percent capacity. So what that means is that theoretically you could basically drop this from 100 to zero for a full entire year and then you would start seeing your battery health deplete. But if you want to extend the life of your phone, like you want it to last like several years into the future, then you're going to want to do something called a partial discharge. Now, what a partial discharge is, is when you charge it up to like 100 and you let it drop to like 70 or 60, and then you charge it back up to like 95 around there, let it drop another 30, bring it back up to, you know, like 95, 98, and so on and so forth, just a partial or a little bit of a discharge and then bring it back back up but this is not always convenient pe for people because they don't always have you know battery packs off to the side where they can just charge things wherever they go and they also don't always have access to a wall outlet so some of these other things that i'm going to mention could also be beneficial for you to know pay attention to the capacity size of your battery when you're buying a smartphone the big news this year is the samsung galaxy note 8 with a 3300 milliamp hour battery has been upgraded to a 4000 milliamp cell for the note 9 bringing a substantially better battery life when you have a phone with less mah it usually has less life in it because it just doesn't have physically a larger battery so smaller batteries will wear out faster over time such as an iphone 7 here that has a much smaller battery than say a galaxy s8 or a Galaxy Note 8, or even its bigger brother, the iPhone 7 Plus. So when you're buying a phone, this is one spec to pay attention to if you think you're gonna be keeping your phone past that two year mark. Now, I was speaking about a partial discharge. If you're not able to get to a charger or have a battery pack when you're doing partial discharges, what you can do is at least pay attention to one factor. If you can make your phone last most of the day and not get too much below 40%, you actually will not hurt the battery that much either. So I would say try to get to a charger before it dips below 40%. And you don't always have to charge it all the way up to 100. You can actually charge it to like 95 to 99. That'll be fine for the battery. It actually operates pretty well between 40 and 99. So you can do that as well. So if you don't have access to a battery pack or a wall outlet for partial discharging all day, just keep in mind, don't let it really dip below 40%. This is what I found to keep my batteries in good health. Okay, so I mentioned that depleting your battery from 100 to zero multiple times will actually hurt the battery life. But if you only do this once per month, you actually help the accuracy of the calibration on the battery percentage icon. So basically, you're going to see an accurate reading if you do at least one charge cycle per month. Now, I still recommend doing partial discharges, but don't only do partial discharges. You have to do those in tandem or along with one cycle charge per month. So again, one cycle charge per month means charge it up to 100, drop it down to zero, and charge it all the way back up to 100. That'll be one charge cycle. Now, if every smartphone gives you 300 to 500, if we do some simple math, you're going to do 12 charge cycles per year, 300 divided by 12 is going to give you 25 
freaking years of battery life uses. Now, this is not really, you know, you're not really going to get 25 years out of your phone, but if you follow the tips, your phone could last a very, very long time. If you keep it in, you know, room temperature and you do the proper charging, your phone could last a very long time. The reason why a lot of people's battery capacity dips is sometimes because of software that can really hurt it, but also because they're not pr practicing proper charging habits. Because I have this iPhone 7 Plus, for example, I've had this thing almost two years now. Now, I've used this thing heavily, and uh, if we go into my battery settings, I've been really paying attention to how I charge it. You can see my battery health is still at a whopping 98% capacity, and I've had this thing almost two years. So when you do practice good battery maintenance techniques like some of the ones I'm sharing with you here, you will extend the life of your battery significantly. Okay, so lastly, there's a big question a lot of people ask, can I charge my smartphone overnight and just go to sleep? Is it going to be all good? And the answer to that is yes and no. Yes, as in it's not going to harm the phone because, you know, the voltage actually cuts off on these batteries once it hits 100. So it's barely feeding any power to the phone. It's not going to you know blow up while you're sleeping. It's not going to go ahead and start a fire. Nothing like that. It's not dangerous. But what it is going to do is lower the battery capacity over time because the more a phone is actually on a charger, the more you're degrading the battery life and if you think about how many hours you sleep through the night that's a lot of time a phone's gonna be on a charger and it does something known as trickle charging so what trickle charging is is basically when you hit 100% it tries to keep you at 100% but if you didn't have your phone on charge overnight you definitely would dip down a little bit in the percentage so it's constantly just providing a little bit of juice to keep keep you at 100%. So that definitely degrades your battery capacity over time. So I think the best thing to do is basically try to charge it, you know, in the morning if you can, wake up a little earlier and just charge your phone and then take it off. But that's not always ideal, so I don't think it's a big thing to worry about. You could definitely charge it overnight, but it will degrade your capacity if you do this all the time. And last up, I want to mention some little thing. If you charge an iPhone, for example, with the small brick, it definitely takes longer to charge. So consider charging with an iPad charger or a bigger charger if you want faster charging speeds. The new iPhone should be including that. And for Samsung, they usually include an adaptive fast charger. So try to use the included charger that comes with the manufacturer comes from the manufacturer oem chargers if you buy some third-party cheap chargers they might actually hurt your battery i found that to actually hurt my smartphones in the past so use official chargers from the manufacturers themselves and that's it in conclusion most phones that you buy brand new can easily go two years no matter how bad your habits are with charging these smartphones so you don't really have to worry about it if you're only going to be upgrading every two years but a lot of these things that i mentioned in this video this knowledge i'm sharing with you will apply to people who are keeping their phones for the extended long term more than three years for example this can really extend your life if you listen to some of the things i mentioned in this video i'm going to quickly recap one keep your phone at room temperature at number two do not deplete the phone to zero often just once per month and number three try partial discharging letting it drop 30 40 percent then putting it right back on the charge as much as possible just get a phone with a physical battery that's just larger than every other phone that you see. That can help you extend the life as well. And don't charge overnight all the time, you know, for the entire life of your phone, unless you're only keeping it for two years, it won't really matter. But if you're keeping it for the long term, try to, you know, not charge it every single night overnight. Try to charge it earlier in the morning or, you know, charge it up before you go to sleep and then, you know, just top it up in the morning before you leave. Like charge it to 100, let it drop 2% on standby before you leave go ahead and throw it back on the charge to get them extra two percent back and that's it that's how to save your phone's battery like literally the actual battery in the phone if you guys found this video helpful enjoyable entertaining informing do me a favor click that like button for me and if you're new here consider subscribing for more nick here helping you to master your technology be sure to be well i hope you get great battery capacity from here on forward i will catch you all in the next episode